Hello everyone, my name is Tanina Amiar, and through this presentation, I'm going to highlight or point out the importance of high shear rheology uh, in terms of shear weight and, um, and temperature also for inks and coatings um, where I point out also the real application uh, conditions. So during this presentation, I'll go briefly through the ink formulations, introduce then uh, our instrument, microfluidic uh, rheometer, um, with whom we did some uh, testing and I'll show some examples after large examples in the ink and coating industry where shear um, viscosity uh, should be analyzed in the real application conditions and jump through to the conclusion. So as you may all know that uh, Developing a new ink, it's a complex uh, task as it uh, considers uh, the formulation itself in terms of viscosity, density, concentration, stability, but also in terms of the device, the print head, compatibility, uh, nozzle diameter, the, the, the injection flow rate, and so on. And, but through this presentation, I'm going to focus mostly on the formulation um, in terms of viscosity, uh, where we did measurements uh, at higher shear weights uh, in the application conditions. So, um, I saw this, the, this graphic uh, presented earlier. So, as I said, in terms of, of uh, in formulation, there is a, a balance to do in terms of surface tension and the viscosity. Uh, there is limits on, uh, in terms of high viscosity values, low surface tension values. Um, but the, in literature, we find this uh, dimensionless uh, diagram in terms of Weber number and Onsorge number that describes the, the zones um, of if the, considering the properties, the physical properties of the ink, what issue we may encounter. It's theoretical, uh, obviously, but we, it gives an insight of the behavior of the ink during the printing. Um, so we have a printability zone and the issues that may occur during printing, which is the drop satellite formation or um, not formation of drop, considering the high viscosity values or surface tension values, and so on. Formation are Newtonian. And th so the measurements are usually done with um, conventional geometry, so at lower shear rates. And I'll show you after examples of formulation that assumed to be Newtonian, but at higher shear rate, uh, shows uh, shear thinning and uh, profiles uh, after. So briefly to introduce, to do it simple, that uh, the viscosity, as we know, it is the resistance to a flow. Uh, and, and the shear rate, it's the velocity gradient measured across a section. So if, the, if we have um, like cross, a bigger cross section, a bigger flow rate, how it generates lower uh, shear rates. In the other case, I put here an image of, of uh, the conditions where higher shear rate occurs, usually when the cross section is quite low and the, um, the flow rates are high. And the nature, we usually encounter this kind of samples Newtonian samples where the viscosity never changes uh, as a function of shear weight. On the other side, we have non-Newtonian but shear thinning profiles where the viscosity decreases as much we increase the, the shear weight. In this slide, I present a large amount of application that exists um, in this scale of shear weight it goes from rest like um, 10 power minus 3 to um, 10 power 7 reciprocal seconds. And usually, the conventional uh, tools for rheology uh, measurements and viscosity measurements are done in, uh, in a zone that is quite a lower shear rate. If you can consider the highest, it could be like of uh, 4,000 reciprocal seconds. But if we want to know if the formula how formulation behaves at higher shear rate, we usually do uh, apply a fit and, um, and uh, extrapolate to have a vision and uh, an insight of how the ink behaves at higher shear rate. 
Also, I had, we had an example of 3D inks, where right? uh, it's assumed to be Newtonian and lower shear weight, but the analysis have been done at, uh, at the real application conditions. We can observe like uh, shear thinning uh, profiles, but how we do extrapolate? And knowing that the application conditions uh, in terms of shear rate for inks and coatings are in this area at higher levels or shear rate that are not covered with the conventional rheometry. This is why I uh, will pass to introduce our uh, microfluidic system to viscosity measurement that allows, um, that have been designed for high shear viscosity measurements. Uh, it's called Fluidicam and um, is something. Okay, we use this microfluidic chips that allows us to reach this kind of, uh, of shear rate, this range of shear rate of higher. Uh, I put here an image of <laughs> laminar flow because in these conditions, when we decrease the, the gap of the channel, we provide laminar flow. There is no mixing inside the, the chip as we are um, using uh, analysis versus um, a standard uh, reference. So the advantage of the microfluidic that it allows us to explore higher shear rate, higher sensitivity at low values uh, of, uh, of viscosity, example of water, ethanol, of these kinds of solvents. Um, what was low volumes needed for uh, viscosity measurements, also like three less than three milliliters per flow curve going from um, uh, 100 till uh, 200,000 um, reciprocal seconds, but also it is a confined system, so there is no evaporation in kind of um, solvent-based uh, so solutions. And most of all, that is no extrapolation because we are doing the measurement at this kind of shear rate that, that corresponds to application conditions. As I described, that I don't know if most uh, of you have seen the instrument, but we introduce via uh, syringes the sample against a reference that both co-flow inside the microfluidic chip, and thanks to the camera, oh sorry, we have a, a live visual of what happens inside the chip. We have here um, an area occupied by the sample and the reference. Uh, what happens exactly is that we apply a flow rate that corresponds to the shear rate I want to apply. And the software, thanks to the camera, adjusts the interface uh, by adjusting the channel. And, measurement, and the measurement of the viscosity is done thanks to this uh, simple <laughs> equation where the, the, the flow rate, we know them because we apply the flow rates, and the weights are measured by the camera by visual um, acquisitions. The, ref the viscosity of the reference is now because we choose the, the viscosity of the, uh, we choose the reference itself, and the conditions for the reference is it should be Newtonian at a at large uh, amount of, uh, of shear rate. The viscosity doesn't change, so the only unknown in this equation is the viscosity of the sample at this. Uh, shear rate uh, that I wanted to explore. So by increasing the values of the shear rate, I can explore, um, sorry, by increasing the value of the flow rate, I can increase so the, the explored shear rate. And this is how it, it is done. So mm, I think it will be quick, but I will present you now uh, a panel of examples that uh, we have been uh, analyzing in inks and coatings and uh, sector. First example here that I had, it's two formulation of sprayable PTFE so coating solution that we received from our customer uh, in Japan, I guess, that they had two formulation, they, want, they uh, don't understand the behavior, they wanted to measure the viscosity. Their, their uh, solutions have been um, analyzed by um, a co plan, uh, con plan rheometry, and they see there is differences at lower shear rate, but they don't know what happens 
at higher level of shear weight. If you consider this graph that we can see that the formulation B is lower than the formulation uh, viscosity of the formulation A, and also in terms of the behavior that the solution A have, have um, uh, a bigger shear thinning profile. But what happens in the real applications of shear uh, conditions real in terms of shear rate? This is what we could have by exploring the high values of shear rate that actually the solutions have approximately the, sa the same behavior. They're close in viscosity considering what we saw at lower values of shear rate. And after um, uh, go passing the 10,000 um, 10, reciprocal second, we can observe that the formulation are quite Newtonian. They are no longer shear thinning. They also send another formulation, which is, I think, the, it is the, the, the same solution by, uh, by adding some, uh, same solution as A by adding some additives. And we can see that the, the second one, the second solution as one, is lower in viscosity at formulation A, but going passing a certain shear rate, it inverses. So the formulation S1 sh shows a higher viscosity than the formulation uh, A. This is, uh, what I uh, this is why I wanted to point out the importance of exploring shear rates that corresponds to the uh, application conditions, but also uh, in terms of temperature. Here, another example in 3D inks, uh, it's an inkjet ink uh, that have been analyzed at, seven Ooh. This gone. at 70 degrees. Um, it is the temperature of the process. We did uh, at first uh, the measurements at uh, lower shear rates with the, the one chip, 150 micrometer chip. Then we saw that at these ranges, the solution shows a Newtonian profile. With new, with there is shear thinning. Actually, the solution is no longer Newtonian. This is why again, the characterization have been performed in representative conditions, as is it an inkjet uh, solution. So the, the shear rates are uh, quite high than the the first set test we did at lower shear rate. Also in inkjet inks, where we received five uh, different ceramic inks, that one of them, they said it has problems. We didn't know which one of them. They did stability um, analysis. They, they didn't show anything uh, different from each other. But doing viscosity measurements at lower shear rate, which that corresponds to the the measurement that we'd, we'd, they have been done with um, the, the conventional geometry, but going further, the solution OP7 showed shear thinning profile. It's the one, uh, one of the solutions that showed um, issues during the printing uh, process. So exploring high shear rate uh, from 1,000 um, reciprocal second gives an insight on the rheological profile of formation in real application uh, conditions in terms of use. And we have been detecting the shear rate quickly with three in three minutes analysis, uh, consuming only three milliliters, uh, less than three milliliters, in terms of, uh, of um, sample volume. Also, another example in inkjet inks also that um, we have been tested, and one of them showed issues actually during the printing, and it is the formulation two, which is the less viscous formulation um, at higher shear rate. Considering the vi viscosity measurement done at lower shear rates, which are uh, Quite they, quite they are quite similar. And when I say low shear weight, we are starting here from 10,000 reciprocal second. It's not 1,000 or 100. So the also the importance of going higher in, uh, in, sh in terms of, uh, of shear weight. Also in ceramic inks, um, 
I came out from pointing <laughs> out of the, the importance of a higher shear rate. We just here to um, emphasize on the precision of the instrument to uh, very low viscosity variations. I have here two samples, uh, one and two, that have been analyzed at 24 and 50 degrees, which is the temperature uh, of the process. Both of them showed the Newtonian profile, but each one, each sample had been analyzed twice with two repetition, and each point is 10 acquisitions. Actually, the instrument gives uh, an average of 10 measurements uh, at each point. If I can say, e each, um, at each shear rate here, since we have two repetitions, we have 20 measurements. So, uh, and this have been done like in f five minutes uh, for the two repetitions, since we are co-flowing uh, and continuously, there is no need to resample because the syringes I've earlier showed, uh, they have a capacity of uh, 10 milliliters uh, each. Um, the second point I wanted to, uh, to want you to keep in mind that the temperature is also important to monitor, since uh, formulation can be sensitive, as you know. To, to temperatures, and here we have we could do the screening in temperature like in 10 minutes for uh, at six temperatures, time for 20 uh, samples. It is a quick instrument to do a viscosity measurement to screen in terms of temperature or in viscosity. I think I'm good in time. I'm jumping through to the conclusion. Uh, as I said, the viscosity, the shear viscosity measurements should be done in the real application conditions uh, um, in terms of shear rate, which, is corris which corresponds to the application conditions um, with, um, in inks with the nozzle and, the, and the, the, um, the roll coatings for coatings also. The advantage of the, the microfluidic system that it is confined, so it is um, suitable for formulation. They are uh, solvent-based. They quickly uh, evaporate or dry. Um, and the also, um, we have a 15 micrometer uh, nozzle um, channel gap, which is representative of the nozzle. Then if there is any clogging uh, in, in, the, in the chip, <coughs> you may be sure that there will be clogging in the, in the, in the print head, actually. And for, this, uh, for the cleaning the, the chips, it's the same as for the, the introducing the sample, but do it backwards, it's, it's easy. We have um, glass chips, so it is easier to clean or to, to reuse, actually. Also, generally, we have no calibration or a zero gap compared to other instruments, so it is based on, um, on the reference. Since the reference is well calibrated, you know the viscosity of the reference we use, and it is Newtonian, there is no problem. It's an open system. You can use any uh, solvent you want. Uh, and there is no, compared also to the QUET system, at a ha certain higher shear rate, f shear rate for uh, vi low viscosity values, there is uh, tailored turbulences that may appear. In this case, we are in confined laminar flow, so there is no um, appearance of this kind of issues for low viscosity uh, uh, samples measurements. Um, I may have, I, <laughs> I put this, um, I didn't want to talk actually about that, but I think it's important to, to, to know that I put again this diagram of uh, where we did uh, a um, analyzes on uh, two formulations of ink. What is this? Um, at, 40 at 35 and 10 degrees. 30 35 and 10 degrees, which is the, t uh, the environment temperature tolerated for this kind of inks. And we can see that according to the system, I mean in terms of uh, the, um, the nozzle diameter and the speed of the um, of, the, of the, the jetting, of the, the, the drop, we can have some shifts in the, and the temperature also controlling the, the, the temperature so that modifies the viscosity. We can have sh shifts um, from a region to another. Sorry for this blank, I don't know <laughs> from where it appears, but 
we can ha we can see how my formulation can go if I increase the the, the nozzle diameter it goes actually f from this side like that increasing the, jet, the, the the speed of the of the nozzle it can goes up in the in the in the, in the in the region for now for this case there's no problem my, my my ink at both temperatures are in the printability zone but if I want to change a print head or, 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 or a flow jetting, I can have an insight where it may go. If I have so my question to, to you, how do you evaluate actually the printability of ink without going to the, the print head uh, testing? This is my question. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, let me know. <laughs>